guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is part one of lesson 5.5. We've got three objectives for this video. We're going to use multiple angle formulas to rewrite and evaluate some equations. We're going to use power reducing formulas to rewrite and evaluate some equations. And we're going to use half angle formulas to rewrite and evaluate some trig equations. So we're going to start off with those double angle formulas. So you can see that there's different formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. Cosine actually has three different formulas that we could use. All three of those show up on your trig sheet. It really just depends on the situation on which of these formulas we would use. Otherwise, it's just a preference thing. You can pick whichever one you want. So in this first example, we're asked to go through and solve 2 cosine of x plus the sine of 2x equals 0. I'm looking at this second piece, since we've got that sine of 2x, we can use one of our double angle formulas. And we can replace the sine of 2x with 2 times the sine of x times the cosine of x. And that's equal to 0. Now if we look at solving this, we can do a little GCF factoring. Because there's a 2 in each of these terms, there's also a cosine in each one of these terms. So I'm going to factor out 2 cosine of x. Then inside of our parentheses, we've got 1 plus the sine of x. And that's all equal to 0. After we have this factored out, remember we take each factor and set it equal to 0 to solve. So we've got 2 cosine of x equals 0 and 1 plus the sine of x equals 0. Solving that cosine 1 on the left, we would divide the 2 over to the right hand side. So we've got the cosine of x equals 0. Rewrite that one as an inverse. We've got x equals the inverse cosine of 0. So we're checking out the unit circle, trying to decide where is our cosine or x value 0. That happens at the angle pi over 2 and also at the angle 3 pi over 2. Now we're not given one of those intervals, so we're going to add the 2 pi n to the end of each one of these for the general form. Now let's look at solving the other piece. So we would subtract the 1 over to the right hand side. So sine of x equals negative 1. Rewrite that one as an inverse. We've got the inverse sine of negative 1. And if we check out where that happens on the unit circle, that happens at the angle 3 pi over 2. But I've already got that one on my list, so I'm not going to write it down again. So we've got pi over 2 plus 2 pi n and 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Next example is just a little bit different. We're going to find the sine of 2 theta, cosine of 2 theta, and tangent of 2 theta based on some given information. And I'm looking at the piece on the right hand side first. We're told that our angle theta is between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. So what that tells me is we're looking at a picture down in the fourth quadrant. Remember, theta is always the angle right next to the origin. We know that our cosine value is 5 over 13. So we've got the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. We could do a little bit of Pythagorean theorem to find this missing side. It ends up being 12. But since it's down in the fourth quadrant, this has got to be a negative 12. Now, if we look at evaluating these, the sine of 2 theta, well, our formula says that's 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. So let's just fill in some information from our triangle. The sine would be negative 12 over 13. The cosine, we said earlier, was 5 over 13. So now this is just one big multiplication problem. If we take 2 times negative 12 over 13 times 5 over 13, we end up with negative 120 over 169. For our cosine of 2 theta, remember we've got three different formulas, and it really doesn't matter which one we use. I'm going to use the one that says 2 cosine squared of theta minus 1. So if we fill in our cosine value, we said that was 5 over 13, but we have to square that and subtract 1. So if we square 5 over 13, we get 25 over 169. And if we multiply that by 2, we get 50 over 169. And then we have to subtract 1 from that. But in order to subtract these, we're going to need common denominators. So I'm going to make this 169 over 169. And then if we carry out our subtraction, we get negative 119 over 169 as our answer for the cosine of 2 theta. Last one we need to do is the tangent of 2 theta. And our formula for that says we go with 2 times the tangent of theta over 1 minus tangent squared of theta. So if we take a look at our triangle, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we're going to go negative 12 over 5. So on top, we've got 2 times negative 12 over 5. On bottom, we've got 1 minus negative 12 over 5 squared. On top, if we multiply this out, we've got negative 24 over 5. On bottom, if we square this negative 12 over 5, we get 1 minus 144 over 25. Then if we look at putting those fractions together on bottom, 
The top is going to stay the same for right now, so negative 24 over 5. On bottom, we need common denominators, so I'm going to make this 1 into 25 over 25, minus 144 over 25, and if we carry out that subtraction on bottom, we end up with negative 119 over 25. Top is still negative 24 over 5. Now, I don't like dividing by a fraction, so instead I'm going to turn it into a multiplication problem with the reciprocal of the denominator. So we get negative 24 over 5 times 25 over negative 119. Now we've got a double negative here, so that's going to become a positive value. This 5 and this 25 will reduce down. The 5 becomes a 1 and the 25 becomes a 5. And then if we look at multiplying these together, across the top, 24 times 5 is 120. And across the bottom, we've got 119. Then 120 over 119 is our final answer. Next set of formulas are called power reducing formulas. So what they let us do is take something that is squared and rewrite it as a first powered trig function. And again, all of these formulas show up on your trig sheet. So in this example, we've got sine to the fourth power of x. And what we want to do is take that and rewrite it so that everything has a first power on it. So just a power of one. And when we do that, all of these will end up turning into cosines. Now our power reducing formulas deal with things that are squared. This is to the fourth power. But we should be able to recognize sine to the fourth power as sine squared of x times another sine squared of x. And then we can break down each one of those individually. So with this first sine squared of x, our power reducing formula says 1 minus the cosine of 2x all over 2. And we're going to have the same thing for this other sine squared of x, so another 1 minus cosine squared of 2x all over 2. Now there is multiplication happening between here, so we can multiply out our fractions on the bottom. 2 times 2 is pretty easy, that's just 4. We're going to foil out the top, so 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times the negative cosine of 2x is negative cosine of 2x. And then we end up with another negative cosine of 2x. And then if we take this negative cosine of 2x times another negative cosine of 2x, we end up with a positive cosine squared of 2x. Combining some like terms, on top we've got 1 minus 2 cosine of 2x plus the cosine squared of 2x all over 4. Now our goal is to get everything as being first powered. So right now we've got this cosine squared in here, so we're going to have to do a little bit more work with that. But before we do that, just to make things a little bit easier on us, I'm going to factor 1 fourth out of here, and that lets us look at this as not being a fraction anymore. So then inside of our parentheses, we've just got 1 minus 2 cosine of 2x plus cosine squared of 2x. And then we're going to look at a power reducing formula for this cosine squared value. So what we're going to do is we've got this 1 fourth times 1 minus 2 cosine of 2x plus this we're going to turn into 1 plus the cosine of 2 times our angle. And if we look right here, our angle is 2x. We're going to have to take 2 times 2x all over 2. Now I'm going to simplify this down just a little bit more. So we've got 1 fourth times 1 minus 2 cosine of 2x. If we look at this fraction, we've got 1 plus the cosine of 2 times 2 is 4x all over 2. To finish this off, I'm going to redistribute this 1 fourth that we took out earlier. So a fourth times 1 is 1 fourth. A fourth times this negative 2 cosine of 2x becomes a negative cosine of 2x over 2 because the 4 and the 2 reduce down. And then if we take a fourth times this other fraction, we've got 1 plus cosine of 4x all over 8 because 4 times 2 is 8. Our goal was to get this rewritten in terms of first powered cosines. We did that, so we're all done with this one. Our last set of formulas are half angle formulas. These do not show up on your trig sheet, so you will need to copy these down. One thing to keep in mind, the sine and the cosine each have a plus or minus in front of that radical. The sine of those things, whether they're positive or whether they're negative, are going to depend on what quadrant we're in.
So in this example, we're going to find the value of sine of 105, but the problem is 105 doesn't show up on our unit circle. So using our half angle formulas, if we double this 105, uh, we end up with 210, and 210 does show up on the unit circle. So we can set this up as the sine of 210 over 2, and then if we look at that sine half angle formula, it's plus or minus the square root of 1 minus the cosine of our u value. So if we look at our fraction, the u value is 210. So we've got the cosine of 210 all over 2. Now first thing I'm going to do is clean up these signs. It can't be both positive and negative. If we look at 105 that's in the second quadrant and we're doing a sine, signs are positive in the second quadrant. So I'm just going to erase this stuff because then it's an implied positive value. Starting to evaluate this, we've got the square root of 1 minus, if we do the cosine of 210, that's negative root 3 over 2, and that's all over 2. Now, I see a double negative happening, so I'm going to turn that into a positive value. I also see a fraction inside of a fraction, so in order to get rid of that, I'm going to multiply top and bottom of my fraction by 2. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of distributive property. So multiplying everything by 2 on top, well, 2 times 1 is 2. And if we take 2 times this root 3 over 2, those 2's cancel out and we just get plus root 3. On bottom, we end up with 4. Now if we look at what's happening, we're square rooting a fraction. So when we do that, we want to take the square root of the top, which is the square root of 2 plus root 3, since we can't reduce that down at all. If we square root the bottom, we just get a plain 2. And this is going to be our final answer. There's no more simplifying that we can do with that. Last example, we're going to use that half angle formula to help us solve an equation. So we've got 2 minus sine squared of x equals 2 cosine squared of x over 2. And I'm looking at the right hand side of our equation. I want to clean up that notation just a little bit. Uh, really, this is like having 2 times the cosine of x over 2 squared, and then I'm going to look at using a half angle formula on that stuff inside of our parentheses. So we've still got 2 minus sine squared of x equals 2 times, replacing this with our half angle cosine formula, that's plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cosine of x all over 2, and there's still the squared outside of our parentheses. Now since all of this stuff is squared, that squared is going to cancel out with this square root and we don't have to keep track of the plus or minus anymore because if we square something that's positive, it stays positive. If we square something that's negative, it becomes positive. So now we've got 2 minus sine squared of x equals 2 times 1 plus cosine of x over 2. And we can clean up the right hand side a little bit more because this times 2 and this divided by 2 will end up canceling out. So now 2 minus the sine squared of x equals 1 plus the cosine of x. Now it would be nice if our sine and our cosine were actually the same trig function. So I'm going to look at this sine squared of x. We can use an identity to replace that with 1 minus the cosine squared of x. And then right hand side we've still got 1 plus cosine of x. If we distribute this negative to make things a little bit easier on us and combine like terms, we've got 2 and negative 1, so that gives us a positive 1 plus the cosine squared of x equals 1 plus cosine of x. I'm going to subtract 1 from each side, and I'm also going to subtract this cosine over to the left hand side right away. So now we've got cosine squared of x minus cosine of x equals 0. Now we can do a little bit of factoring here. We can pull a cosine out of each term. So then we've got cosine minus one inside of our parentheses. And then after we factor, we set each factor equal to zero. And then we're gonna do a little bit of solving there. This first one's already set up to rewrite as an inverse. We get x equals the inverse cosine of zero. So if we're checking out the unit circle where that happens, that's at the angle pi over two and also three pi over two. Now we're not going to be adding anything extra onto these angles because at the beginning it said keep them on the interval from zero to two pi. Taking a look at our other equation, let's add one to both sides. So cosine of x equals one. Rewriting as an inverse, we get x equals the inverse cosine of one. And checking out the unit circle, that happens at the angle zero. So we've got three answers on this one, zero, pi over two, and three pi over two. That's going to be it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.